All right, so it's Saturday, May 9th, and we're here with the virtual retreat. And this morning we've got Christy McKenzie. Thanks so much for joining us. It is my pleasure, it's an honor to be here. We're gonna celebrate Mother's Day today. Yes, we are. So I'm going to let some of our friends in. We have 18 people right now waiting. So admit all. All right. Good morning. Good morning. So everybody might be muted. Hi there, you're welcome to unmute yourselves if you'd like for a few moments while we just gather ourselves together. I'm sure that there's going to be a few people joining late, so we will give it a few minutes, of course. But in the meantime, I'd love to, I think some of you know Christy. I see everybody waving. Hi. And some of you don't know me either. So I will first introduce myself. I'm Dawn Oliver, and I'm the founder of Well Explored. And I put together this virtual retreat series so that we can all connect in this time of isolation and get to spend some time with incredible retreat leaders like Christy here and also explore some really cool places. So Christy and I have known each other for quite some years now. We, uh, we both are mothers to, well now she, is Savannah six already? No, five. Almost. Yeah, we both have five-year-olds, so we have gone through the mama hood together. But um, Christy and I have also been in the yoga and wellness circle together. And she has been teaching for 20 years, practicing for 30 years, if you can imagine, because she looks <laughs> so radiant. <laughs> and that's something that she really focuses on, is teaching people how to live a conscious and inspired life. So I'm so, so excited to have Christy here. Thank you so much for joining us, Christy. Thank you, Don. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you for envisioning this day to celebrate Mother's Day in such a unique way. And thank you for all you do, Don. Don's company, Well Explored, is a um, real passion project that came from her own expertise in the wellness field, but also in the travel industry um, for many years working with Condé Nast. So I've been fortunate enough to go on many retreats and trips curated by Don, and she does that for groups, but she also does it for individuals, which I just found out about recently. So yes. um, if you need good travel help, Don is your lady. And she is yes. definitely, um, I have to say, Don, I'm going to give you a little shout out because I always tell her, <laughs> but it's true. Don is the most even keeled, calm and kind person. No matter what happens, she seems to be unflappable. So um, that's a real testament to how your yoga practice is being embodied. And that's hard because I get flappable. I'm Puerto Rican Italian. I get flappable and I'm inspired. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Christy. Thank you. Yeah, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. So welcome mamas. And um, thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and out of all the things that you're probably doing at home to be here with us. It means so much to be able to connect like this um, in the virtual space when we can't be with each other in person. And especially because it's Mother's Day, I think it's particularly vital that we pause and we connect with ourselves, we connect with a like-minded tribe, and we connect with our souls. So thank you on behalf of all the people you serve. Thank you for taking this time for yourself. So when Dawn um, came up with the idea for this weekend, she envisioned a weekend connected um, to the Caribbean, in particular two islands, St. Lucia and Antigua. Did I say that right, Antigua? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, and I think it's a really beautiful idea because for me, different areas of the earth have either more feminine or more masculine energy. So for instance, the Caribbean, which I feel very fortunate to be from, I was born in Puerto Rico, the Caribbean holds a particularly feminine energy. Uh, if you've been lucky enough to go anywhere in the Caribbean, you've probably felt a sense of grounding, I felt a sense of nourishment, and um, likely a sense of a great deal of space to allow yourself to unfold. It holds, the energy of the Caribbean holds, it's very watery, it's very luscious, it's very close to the equator. So it's a very grounding, holding kind of a, a vessel of a space to be in. And this is not true for all islands. So if you've been to the islands of the um, Pacific, 
like Hawaii or other islands out there, they're beautiful. I mean, absolutely stunning, very lush, but the energy is quite different. It's a little more masculine. It's fiery. It's eruptive. It doesn't really ground so much as inspire and um, invite you to do and, and explore, right? So it's a little bit different energy. The Caribbean really invites you to be <laughs> and chill. And yes, explore, but in a very different pace than you would on the Hawaiian islands. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting to note that different areas of the earth have different energy. So I thought it was particularly wise to choose the Caribbean islands to focus on Mama Energy Weekend. Yes. So I'm gonna do about 55 minutes of practice today, and then we're gonna move into Jasmine Terrani. Terrani? Yeah. Terrani. Um, she's an author who's written a beautiful book called Extraordinary Mother, so she'll move into a conversation with us right after my class. And then we break, right, Dawn? Yes. And then we'll do the exploration of the islands starting at three? Three. Mm -hmm. Three. And so we'll actually go and see footage of St. Lucia and Antigua and some properties that Dawn is familiar with and has connection to. And they're particularly good properties for families exploring those islands. Exactly. And um, then we'll have a round table with mothers from those islands because while motherhood has similarities, of course, we all share a lot of the same struggles and the same triumphs, it has a different flavor in particular parts of the world. So to connect to that Caribbean mother vibe and what they're going through at this moment, we're gonna to talk to some mothers from those islands. And then we'll finish with one of my favorite mamas, um, Jody Carey, who's my sweet uh, sister and teacher and partner. She's gonna finish us off this afternoon with a slow flow and a grounding uh, sound and mantra experience. So we have quite a beautiful day. Let's begin. Um, I wanted to invite three things into the practice this morning. And there are three things that I think are epitomized by the mother. And when I say the mother, that doesn't mean that we have to mother a child, right? I think that everybody, man or woman, has divine mother energy within them, just like we have divine uh, father energy. Right? So we all hold the feminine archetype. And that's what I wanted to connect to today. And the three words for the feminine archetype that I wanted to invite you to explore and feel in your own space are nurture, ground, and create space. That is what a good mother does. Right? We may or may not have had good mothers, <laughs> but we have likely had good mother um, figures. And a good mother will help ground us, will certainly nurture us, and will hold space for us. So um, we may have had a great teacher who did that. We may have had a good mentor. We may have be lucky enough to have a great partner in this life who does that for us, who grounds us, who nurtures us, who holds space for us. But the mother archetype is very much about grounding, nurturing, and holding space. And because it's such a particular time during this pandemic, during this quarantine, it's interesting that our collective mother, Mother Earth, right? Someone who we are celebrating through the islands that Dawn has chosen, I thought she would be the best example for teaching us how that mother energy grounds, nurtures, and holds space. And when I say hold space, she holds space for everything in the full spectrum of this life to come up. So a good mother can hold space for their child or hold space for their pet or hold space for the project that they're mothering or the work that they're due and, and, and in such mother that work or hold space for their partner or friends or themselves. We can hold space as mother to allow and help support the person or thing that we're mothering to let everything that's coming up in their experience come up without judgment, without pushing away, without trying to fix. That tendency to fix or take action is a beautiful one, and that's more connected to the divine father, right? The divine masculine. But the tendency to just hold and allow things to be without needing to fix, that's supremely mother. It's a tricky thing to do, and it's something that as a physical mother to a child, I'm always working on and trying to get better. But I'm also trying to refine that as I mother myself, as I see things inside me that I don't particularly like, as I feel things inside me that pull me off. 
I have to keep working over and over again to ground myself, to nurture myself, and to simply hold space for the things in me that come up, whether I like them or not, to allow myself to feel all the feelings. And just like Mother Earth, as she does this for us, she reminds us to do it for ourselves. However, we cannot do this work for someone else or, or ourselves or some other project <clears throat> if we don't give space to care for ourselves. So because Mother Earth is always teaching us, she is teaching us something so invaluable right now. She has basically demanded her space. <laughs> she has said, that's it, I need to pause. I need everyone to take leave and I need to nourish myself and I need to ground myself and I need to hold space for myself so that when I'm good and ready, <laughs> I can invite you all to go at your breakneck speeds once again. Hopefully not quite at our same breakneck speed, but that's how I interpret what Mother Earth is saying to us right now. So I thought it would be perfect to take her heed as always and do that for ourselves today. We're carving out space for ourselves. We're asking our friends, our family, our projects to hold on while we retreat together and we ground, we nurture, and we hold space for ourselves so that we can then go out and mother everyone else and everything else. So with that in mind, let's take a comfortable seat. And we'll begin by connecting to Mother Earth. And I'm gonna move back so you can see me just a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> take a comfortable seat. And if that means you have to sit up on something, that's fine. If you need to sit up on a chair, that's totally fine as well. You don't physically have to touch the earth. You can put your hand down if you're sitting in a chair and send energy to the earth. But if you can sit comfortably near the ground, we're gonna start with a mudra called the Gaia Mudra. So we're gonna connect our energy to the energy of Earth Mama. We'll take our left hand and place it over our heart. And the right hand will touch the ground. So I just touch lightly with fingertips. And again, if you're sitting in a chair, just put your right hand towards the earth and imagine connecting your fingertips towards the earth. Close your eyes and let your breath become fluid and full. One thing about Mother Earth is that her patience knows no bounds. So be patient and tender with yourself as you invite your breath to lengthen and to deepen. Feeling the space beneath your left hand, the heart space fill and move with every inhale and every exhale. Take a moment to connect first and foremost to your own heart underneath that left hand, being fueled and beaten by that breath that you breathe in from Mother Earth. May we find comfort and a bit of an oasis in our own heart today. May our own heart ground us and nurture us and hold space for us to explore and unwind and let go of things as we need today. And honoring our own heart full of divine mother energy Let's now connect to the right hand, either touching the earth or reaching towards her. With every inhale, honor your own heart underneath your left hand. Fill it with breath, with space, with appreciation, with nurture. And with every exhale, send energy down through your right arm, through those right fingertips touching the earth or touching towards earth. Sending a little prayer of gratitude and thanks grounding right back into our Divine Mother who holds us all with such space. Feel your connection to her, not just in this lifetime, but in many past. We are all children of the earth and she teaches us how to mother. The more often and the more clearly we can pause and listen to her teachings, heed her rhythm and her energy, the more she will guide us in our own mothering, whether that be for children, for friends or family, for projects and passions, for pets, 
and for our own selves. Mothering requires a great deal of nurturing, aid in grounding, and the ability to sweetly and tenderly hold space. And so that's what we will try to do for ourselves today so that we can leave today with an ability to do that for others. Bring your hands in front of your heart. And let the inhale be as full and sweet as the exhale. Let that exhale be just as long, just as fluid, just as patient as the inhale. Slow the breath down as best you can so every breath in and out nurtures. Every breath in and slowly out grounds. More weight in the pelvis, more softness to the shoulders and neck and face. And finally, with every breath in and out, Create space, feeling the uplifting through the low belly and the rest of the spine and the ribs. Softness and ease through the face and the scalp, creating space in the mind that is likely very overworked and very taxed these days. Let's share one ohm to begin the movement medicine part of our practice. Welcome a slow, deep breath in. To our collective Mother Earth, we can bow with gratitude. May we all connect with her with enough clarity and tenderness to hear her teachings about the necessity for grounding, for nurturing, and for holding space. and lift your head, open your eyes, and welcome yourself to the practice. I forgot to mention if you are joining with a friend or a sister or a mother or a daughter, thank you for inviting someone special to share this time with you. What a beautiful way to celebrate Mother's Day. So sitting either in your chair or on the floor, we're going to inhale and push the pelvis down, anchor the pelvis. You can take your hands and press it down. So you feel that sense of grounding. Yeah, oh, wonderful. So really just allow your pelvis to be heavy and your hands can just add a little bit of weight there. Not too much so your neck or shoulders tighten, but just enough so you feel the weight of the pelvis rooting and the belly rising up and out through the spine, up and out, toning the belly so you're extending up through the crown of the head. Now, keep the weight of the pelvis rooting. As you inhale, let the arms float up. Keep the weight of the pelvis rooting down. And then exhale, bring your hands through center. So again, focus, inhale, arms go out to the side, slow, big semicircles, but press the pelvis down as you do that. And exhale, hands through center. Keep the low belly toned here. And last time, inhale. Anchor the pelvis into the earth and let that help you make space through the belly, spine, and arms. And exhale, keep the low belly toned as you bring your hands to your heart. Beautiful. Take your left hand to the left on the floor and reach the right arm over. And then as you inhale, lengthen through the torso, spread the fingers on that right arm. And as you exhale, push down through the left hip. So anchor the left hip and make more space through the left side. Then wait for your next exhale, push off the left hand and come on to the right hand. Now the left arm goes over. Inhale, lengthen through the spine, spread the fingers of the left hand. Exhale, anchor through that left hip, stretch through that left side. So the more we ground down through the hip, the more space is created. One more time, exhale, push off the right hand, land on the left, stretch through the right. Anchor down through that right hip, make space through that right side, nourishing yourself with every inhale, exhale. And as you exhale, push off the left, land with the right, 
stretch with the left. Use the exhale to anchor through that left hip and lengthen through that left side. Your own breath nourishing you as you move. Come back to center. Now we're going to stand up. And I am going to turn my mic on because we'll move to a different camera. I'm going to mute my, turn down my volume here. And Dawn, you can mute me. So hang on. Okay. So Dawn, if you could change. Oh, you already did it. Okay, very good. Can you guys hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up just to make sure the volume? Excellent. Thank you, Dawn. Okay, so come to your mats. Hang on. Let me just move this back a touch. Better. Okay. So standing at your mat, the top of your mat, we're going to inhale and reach the arms up. Same thing. And exhale, bring the hands through center. So same thing here, inhale, ground down through your pelvis, but let the spine rise up with space. And exhale, come back to the center. And last time, inhale, arms up, anchor down through pelvis and feet. Keep the low belly toned as the hands slowly come down through the midline, right to your heart space. Then inhale, standing at the top of your mat, reach up. And exhale, fold forward. If you need to, separate your feet wider and keep a soft bend in the knees. And we'll bend one leg at a time here, letting our elbows be soft. Relax your face and breathe a nourishing breath. Just moving tenderly through the legs, nourishing the muscles as they stretch and open on this morning. Please stay with that long inhale, long exhale. And then ground the feet. You can keep the knees softly bent if you wish. Inhale, stretch the spine forward to a flat back. And exhale, tone the belly and fold over the legs. Inhale again, lengthen into a flat back, stretching through the crown. And exhale, tone the lower belly as you fold, ground down into the feet. Last time, inhale, extend. And exhale, fold. And we're going to step the right foot back to a long lunge. Hold this position, keeping the back thigh strong. Exhale, stretch the pelvis back through the back heel as you lengthen forward through the belly and crown. So the inhale will just engage our muscles, keeping the feet hugging towards one another. The exhale will help us ground, pelvis pressing into both feet, giving space to the belly and spine. Take the left hand up into a gentle twist here. Keep the feet magnetizing in as you inhale, strengthen the legs. As you exhale, create that grounding. Pass the pelvis into the feet. Turn the belly and make space through the heart. Bring your left hand down to the floor and step back, downward facing dog. And then downward facing dog, you can pedal your legs, bending one leg at a time. Long, nourishing breaths, reminding yourself how vital it is that we take time for ourselves like this. This is a sweet gift for yourself on Mother's Day, whether you're a mother of a child or not. And then we'll come forward for a plank pose, but if it feels best for you to put your knees on the floor, do that. Just keep the low belly toned. And if you're in full plank, keep the low belly toned and the hips high. Now our grounding points are our feet and our fingertips in particular. Keep that going as you move into your chaturanga or knees, chest, and chin. And as you come up into cobra pose, ground with your toenails and fingertips, rise through the belly and heart. And, and exhale, exhale back, back downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in here, armpits are lifted, shoulder blades are strong, stretch through the arms. And as you exhale, we're going to step that left, oh, sorry, the right foot forward into a long lunge. And then find this, the simplicity of the form here, the back thigh tends to be very soft and forgotten. So really lift it and extend energy through the back heel. The feet are gently hugging towards one another so the hips feel a little tone and squareness. And maintain that as you push the pelvis back through the back heel and stretch the belly forward through the crown. Now keep all those actions and do a little twist. Try not to twist with the head. Try to really anchor the pelvis down, grounding, so the twist happens around the low belly. 
the head and the chest just follow in that trajectory. Deep breath in, feeling the legs, part of the earth. And then as you exhale, ground back down into our mother, lift and turn the belly and make space. Bring your hands to the ground, step forward, standing forward bend. And then this time we're gonna walk our hands over to the right, just a little bit, just a little crescenting through the left side of the body. Go ahead and bend your right leg just a touch. So the leg that you're moving towards is the bent one. And then that left leg is straight behind you. Pull the left hip back and lift the belly out of the hips, just getting a little more stretch through that left side. Make sure that when you bend the right knee, you're not torquing the knee. Keep the whole right foot rooted down. And then walk yourself back through center. You're gonna micro bend the left leg as you walk your hands over to the left side. I'm staying on my fingertips. And then as I exhale, I'm gonna pull the right hip back, ground down into the right foot, and feel the space as I stretch the belly out of my hips, opening the right torso, the right ribs and the right waistline, maybe all the, way up, all the way up to the right shoulder. And then come back, softly bend the knees, hold elbows and allow yourself to hang here. But with the knees bent, actively reach your sits bones back. Relax your face, pull the armpits back so you feel the shoulder blades strong in the back. And then bring your hands to your hips. Keep the knees softly bent if you wish. Lift your shoulder blades. Root down. So ground down through the pelvis into all sides of the feet. Inhale, reach the arms up. And exhale. Hands through heart center. Back forward over your legs. Inhale, stretch long through the spine. Exhale, step the right foot back to a long lunge. This time we'll maintain the feet magnetically hugging towards one another, the strength and lift of the back thigh, but make your way up to a high lunge. And you can keep your hands here, bring them to your hips, or take them all the way up over your head if and when you're ready. Fingers are spread, back thigh is rising. Keep the legs strong with every exhale, ground into mother. Push the pelvis down, lift the belly so there's space being created for each of the vertebrae. Now keep the feet hugging in, bring your hands down slowly into little cactus arms, squeeze the shoulder blades, and then reach back and take a hold of your hands. Gently interlace the fingers. Keep the legs strong, squeezing the feet gently towards one another, back thigh rising. Inhale here, and then with the last exhale, we're gonna ground down through pelvis, lift the belly up, and open a little more space through the lungs. Bring your hands all the way to the floor. Take your left foot back and up into three-legged downward facing dog. Open that hip, keep the right armpit high and stretch the arms a little longer, really grounding through your fingertips, making space in the armpits. Good. And then we're gonna bring your left knee forward into pigeon pose. But we're gonna stay in a high version of pigeon pose. So come on to your fingertips. If you have blocks or props nearby that serve like a block, a book or something, towels, you can be on blocks if that feels more comfortable. You don't have to, but it might um, be nice for some of us. Otherwise, you can keep your fingertips in front of you. The back heel, I'm gonna keep the back heel lifted. And then I'm gonna keep both of my feet very active. With an inhale, gently hug the knees towards one another so the hips square. As you exhale, ground down again, push the pelvis down, feel the lower belly and the lower back lifting up and open through the chest as the spine rises. Just hold here. Some of you might be inspired to see if you can take one arm up or the other. This is a little more intense, so do as you wish. But really keep that sense of rooting down through the pelvis, letting your hips kind of settle as the belly and spine rise. Now keep that and come down onto your forearms. But when you come down on the forearms, keep that sense of the pelvis grounding down and back and the belly reaching forward. So there's a real quality of active extension in this pose rather than calm release. Because this is our morning practice and though we're nourishing, we also want to enliven. Long, slow breaths in. Activate your feet, especially that front foot, so you're protecting the knee that's at a pretty perilous bend and weight bearing there. 
pull the left hip back and stretch back through the pelvis as you reach forward through the belly and the crown. And then take it back to downward facing dog. Now we're gonna balance on our left hand and the outer edge of the left foot is gonna go flat on the mat. So we're karate chopping our back foot on the mat. And the right foot can either be stacked, staggered, or the easiest way to do this is to put your right foot all the way in front of your hips, push the feet down so the hips rise, head and shoulders back. Deep breath in, really ground through your feet and your left fingertips, grounding into the mother, and then lean back, making space, opening the lungs, nourishing the whole body. Bring your right hand down, downward facing dog. We'll move either through a vinyasa or a child's pose. So listen to what's right for you and follow that. Let your breath nourish you, whether you're pausing in child's pose or moving through your vinyasa. Any part that's touching the ground, really give that honor. Attune to all the teachings that Mother Earth gives us to take time to claim our space so we might better nurture and heal others. Let's bring the right foot forward between our hands now. Take your time if you're coming up from child's pose and then we'll make our way up to our high lunge. Every breath, receive it as nourishment for yourself. Every breath, tone the legs, hug the feet towards one another, back thigh rising. Every exhale, give back to the earth, push down from your pelvis into her. Slowly bring your hands out to the sides like cactus arms, squeeze the shoulder blades, Bring your hands back behind you. If you can, when you interlace the finger, put the opposite thumb on top, your least favorite thumb on top. Once again, inhale, square the hips, gently hugging the feet towards one another, back thigh strong, and exhale, root down. Anchor ground into the earth for her support. Feel her help you lift the low belly, the low back, and open through the lungs. Bring your hands to the floor. Take it back to three-legged downward dog. So that right leg sweeps up and open. The left armpit, try to keep it as high as the right. And from the upper back, the strength of your shoulder blades, stretch the arms a little longer and make space through the right hip. Soften your face. Tenderness, just like an ideal mother. And then bring that right knee forward into pigeon pose. And when you land, land softly, but land with awareness. So the feet are immediately active. If you want to go deeper in your pose, step the left knee further back. And then find your ability to hold this kind of challenging pose. I find upward, it's kind of lifted pigeon pose to be somewhat challenging because I want to sink into that right hip. So to keep gently hugging the knees towards one another is a good remembrance of the kind of effort it takes to mother, right? We have to remember it's the gentle hugging in so the hips stay square. The effort it takes to carve out time for ourselves. The effort it takes to allow feelings to rise up within the people we mother or the things we mother. It takes a lot of effort because we wanna fix things and move them along. <laughs> keep the hips square, keep grounding the pelvis back, lift the belly forward and move into a more relaxed version of pigeon. But still keep the gentle effort through the legs, toes active, knees hugging in. Every exhale, stretching back through the pelvis and lengthening forward through the belly, through the crown. One thing I've been contemplating a lot and helping uh, clients who I've been working with is holding space for ourselves when we're not so great, when our best doesn't show up. So that takes a lot of effort because it's easy to beat ourselves up if we're not the great mother or we're not keeping up with homeschooling or, or our house is looking kind of messy. <laughs> There's a lot of ways we can beat ourselves up. So may we all hold a little bit of effort in being tender with ourselves and allowing what is to be without judgment. Every time we make effort on the mat, we can remember our efforts to those ends. All right, come slowly up. 
move to downward facing dog and then we'll do Vashistasana, the side plank pose on the right. So the right fingertips are rooting. The right outer edge of the right foot hits the floor. Then I'm going to step the left foot forward, press the feet down, lift the hips and turn as I take my left hand up. Now really use your feet and legs. It's what grounds you that allows you to turn and make space through the heart. And then come back down. Moving into child's pose or a vinyasa as you wish. Every breath, a gift of nourishment. Savor these fleeting breaths, these fleeting moments. And then walk slowly forward to the front of your mat, standing forward bend. It feels nice to bend, softly bend the knees or bend the legs one at a time. Please allow yourself the space to follow those impulses. Your intuitive tendencies in the movement are so valuable. And then we'll go ahead and bend the left leg. The left hand, we're gonna move it more central so it's right under our face. And we're gonna turn through the belly, take the right hand up. Breathe here, trying not to pull the hand back at the expense of the shoulder going forward. So keep it more forward and really pull the shoulder blade back. Pull that right hip back, ground down into the right foot, lift and turn through the belly, and make space through the heart. Bring your right hand down and we'll switch sides. Bend the right leg, turn through the belly. I like to pause with my hand on the hip so I can really be uh, very mindful and active in my shoulder blades before I let that left hand go up. Strengthen through that straight leg. Your left leg is straight and strong with the kneecap. And then as you exhale, pull the left hip back, ground down into the left foot, and let that grounding drive a more spacious turn through belly and into heart. Good. And then come back to center. Inhale, root down into the earth. Rise up through belly, through spine, through fingertips. And exhale, bring your hands to the heart. How are we doing? How's the sound? Everything okay out there? Good. Awesome. Okay, we're going to take a wide stance now on the mat. So going to go long, doing our best to get our feet parallel and our feet about as long as the uh, wrists are, so right underneath the wrist. So it's a little further out than most of us want to go. All right, so anchor down through the outer edges of the feet here and then fold forward, touch the floor. At first, I like to start with a nice long spine, fingertips on the ground, both sides of my torso are long. I let my heart settle into my shoulder blades. And then I want you to feel into your feet. Really make sure the outer edges of the feet are rooting. Softly bend the knees and widen the knees apart as you reach your sits bones back. Then bend the elbows. Now keep everything as it is. Your head's gonna go low because your knees are bent, your knees are wide and your sits bones are reaching back. Now do a little roll with the right shoulder blade and the left. So you're just rolling and feeling the shoulder blades really clearly on your back. Your fingertips are on your floor. Uh, don't go flat hands. Just enlivening the shoulder blades. Now, bend both elbows. Shoulder blades are nice and strong. Stretch the legs as straight as you can. Tone the lower belly, and as you exhale, press down into the feet, trying to lengthen the leg bones into the earth as the belly stretches out of the hips and helps you dive into a little deeper fold here. You can stay here or you can clasp your hands and stretch the hands over your head. Because our time is somewhat short for a yoga practice, I wanna give you a lot of chances to open the heart, little back bendings, even through the more grounding work of hip openers and hamstring stretches. Good. And then we're going to do a similar twist. Left hand in front of you, right arm goes up. 
You can bend the left leg if that feels good, if that helps give you a little more space to turn through the belly, or keep both legs straight. As you inhale, lengthen the spine, strengthen the legs gently. As you exhale, push down from pelvis into the feet and turn through the spine. Take that right arm, bring it along the low back and pull the right shoulder blade back as you press your feet heavy into the floor, driven by the grounding of your pelvis. Then come back to center. Right hand goes down, left hand goes up. A little word about twists is that they're a really cool class of poses because they're neutralizing. So if you need energy, a twist will give you energy. If you need to calm down, a twist will quiet. Take the left forearm behind the low back, strengthen the legs, and remember you can bend the right leg if that helps, give you a little more leverage in your twist. One more breath, anchor down through pelvis, turn through belly, lean back through head and shoulders. And then come back to center, walk the feet slowly in just a little bit and come up. Because it is Mother's Day, I thought we'd do a little goddess pose. So turn your feet slightly out, bend the knees, make sure your tailbone is stretching down and your knees are wide, shoulder blades are back, low belly toned. Think of what we did when we started class, hands on hips, push the pelvis down, but lift the belly up. Now keep that, take the arms up. Keep pressing down through pelvis, down into your feet, inhale, exhale right, forearm to right thigh, stretch long through the left side. Inhale, push the pelvis down, knees are wide, don't let them roll in. Exhale, go the other way. Left forearm to left thigh, anchoring down through right hip. Last time, root down, push down through the pelvis, neck and shoulders are soft. Exhale, stand up, whoo, and bring your hands out. Bring your feet a little closer together, that was lovely. And we'll go back to the front of our mat. We'll bring it down to the floor now. Inhale, reach the arms up. And exhale through heart center, giving honor to our collective mother. Fold forward and bow to her. Inhale, lengthen through your spine. And exhale, step back downward facing dog. Find the lines of your downward dog and recognize that the pose is the physical configuration, but the yoga is what is felt. So breathe into the form. Feel what helps you ground, muscles that you can activate to help you ground. Feel how you can nourish with every breath, the intention in your mind, the quality of your heart. And feel how the intention, the heart, and the body working together can create the space to hold you. To mother yourself today. Come all the way forward and down to your belly any way that feels good. Clasp your hands behind your back. Soft with the fingers, strong with the shoulder blades. Lift the feet off the floor, lift the hands away from the hips, and lift your belly and chest off the floor as much as you can, but try not to look forward. Look slightly down so the back of the neck has length and space. Spread the fingers, rise up a little taller. Feel the low belly, try to keep it up and in. And then slowly release down. You can make a, a little pillow with one fist on top of the other, or you could just lie all the way down, forehead maybe in uh, your forearms. And some of you might even enjoy doing full pranam, which is forehead down, Arms extended forward. This is as low as you can get to bow to Mother Earth. I highly recommend doing this maybe when no one's watching <laughs> in a patch of grass. It is so supremely, supremely grounding. Come up onto your forearms. Uh-oh. I think my computer cut out, so I, at least you guys are over there. You're still there, right? Yes, okay. Come up onto your forearms. We're gonna bend the right knee. The left forearm is gonna go in front of your body. It's gonna turn around and grab your right 
foot with your right hand. Good, pull that foot in, anchor down through the pelvis and stretch the belly forward. Keep that knee heavy and the foot active. And then release and switch to the other side. Right forearm in front of you, left knee bends, grab a hold of the left foot, keep the foot active in the hand, pull the foot towards that outer left hip, anchoring down through the pelvis and stretch forward through the belly. And then release and come up to have a seat. <clears throat> We're gonna take our, our hips to the left of our feet, okay? And our feet the right foot is gonna rest in the arch of the left foot. So you're sitting heavy on your left buttocks just to the left of your feet. The right foot is in the arch of the left. Left hand goes behind, right hand to the right knee. Inhale, rise up through your spine. Exhale, turn right around the low belly, head and shoulders back. Inhale, rise up, activate your feet. Exhale, turn through the belly, grounding down through your pelvis, making space through the belly and spine. Last breath, inhale to rise, activate feet, shoulder blades back. Exhale to turn deep within the low belly. Then inhale, come out of it and we'll go to the other side. I'll stay with my back turn so that you can see my feet. I go to the left, to the right of my feet now, and this time my left foot is gonna be placed in the arch of my right foot. Toes are gently engaged, right hand on the floor, left hand on the right knee. Inhale, use that right hand, use it as a prop into the earth to make space and lift through the spine. Exhale, turn gently around the low belly. Your inhale is the rise, the engagement. The exhale is the gentle turn. Inhale, rise. Exhale, turn. Use the in-breath to make tone, to make space. Use the out-breath to ground through the right hip and lift and turn through the belly. And then slowly come back to center. And we'll finish with one forward bend. We're gonna sit just off of your mat. And the reason I do this is so that when you take your legs wide, your heels have some padding. Your, the backs of the heels tend to be a little bony, so it's nice to sit to the side of your mat and take the legs out. Now, this might be really uncomfortable, so you might wanna use a blanket or a towel to lift your sitting bones. You don't have to go very wide with your legs. Just go to where it is doable. With your hands, grab the buttocks flesh and turn it out and rotate the inner thigh flesh down. You're turning the inner thigh down, but you're pulling the buttock flesh back and out. And do that with your other leg as well. So you're internally rotating the fascia, the muscles of the leg. Taking your time to do this is really important. So don't just throw it away. Really move your meat. <laughs> you're moving the clay of your body. Anchor down through the inner edges of your legs. Toes are really nice and spread. The heels, it's as if they're energizing towards one another. So you feel and engage those inner thighs. You can keep your hands behind you. Sits bones rooting down, lower back lifting, and then tip forward to wherever is appropriate. It might feel more safe to keep your hands behind you, gently pushing the floor away, helping the low back to stay lifted. Or you could bring your hands in front of you. Just finding wherever is your place. You don't have to go very far. Let the sounds move as we find our breath. Wherever is right for you. You might feel a really nice stretch or a really intense stretch, so hold there. And just do what we did at the beginning of class. Ground down through the pelvis, lengthen through the crown, whether your position is here. Grounding down through pelvis, lifting through belly and spine or your position is here, ground down through the pelvis, stretch through belly and crown. One more breath, give a little silent prayer of appreciation for this time to gather with each other, 
to honor the earth and to remember her lessons to us as mothers. And then gently come up. And we'll finish together. You can take Shavasana. I'm just going to move a little closer to the screen so I can see you. You can take Shavasana or you can sit in meditation. Whatever is right for you. Allow your body to become heavy if you're in Shavasana. And if you're in sitting meditation, allow your pelvis to become heavy. I'm happy to see most of you in Shavasana. I think it's important for everyone, but certainly us mamas to really take up the space we need. And if you're in meditation, allow your spine to take up the space you need with every breath, filling and lengthening. This is such an unusual and uncertain time and there is a spectrum of emotions and experiences coming up for all of us. Feel the comfort and the sisterly love of all the women gathered here today holding you, surrounding you if you're in Shavasana, inviting you to take up more space and surrender to Mother Earth's call of gravity. We're standing with you and alongside of you if you're sitting in your meditation, all of us together, our hands are right behind your heart. While we are all different and we go through many different things, we all experience the depths of pain, fear, grief, and a bliss of joy and laughter and love. We are all children of the earth. Let yourself be held by her as the grandmother. The mother who reminds us and shows us all the way if we're brave enough and tender enough to simply listen and trust. We as women come from a lineage of incredible beings. And we have what it takes to see ourselves and our people and our places and our passions. We have it within us to get through this as gracefully as possible. But so much of our ability to do that depends on being able to carve a little time out for ourselves, even if it's just a minute to deeply breathe and remind ourselves that we are children of the earth. So we may ground, we may nourish ourselves, and we may hold space for ourselves to allow whatever feelings, whatever things, whatever good things about ourselves, whatever not so good things about ourselves, to allow those things to come up and to hold them with the fierce tenderness that Mother Earth holds all of us. Breathe deeply into your body, into this earth of yours. Feel the belly rise and fall, the lungs fill and expand. Bring your left hand over your heart and the right hand on the belly, whether you're in meditation or Shavasana. If you're in Shavasana and you want to end sitting, you may. If not, please stay. Please stay laying down. Enjoy these last few seconds. Left hand over heart, right hand over belly. Give a great deal of gratitude to our collective Mother Earth and thank her for all she does for us, for how she grounds and nourishes us and how she holds space for the full spectrum of our humanity <laughs> to come up. 
and thank her for this invaluable lesson of how she has demanded some time for herself. May we take heed and may we remember to carve out time for ourselves best we can in our days. May we mother ourselves today through this retreat and going forward. And may the mothering of ourselves have a lot of nourishment for ourselves, help us ground, and help hold us in that space that only the divine feminine can give, the space of not needing to fix, but the space of allowing to come up, to come up and be held for as long as necessary. I honor each one of you as mother. I honor each one of your mothers and grandmothers and female lineage for how they stepped into this powerful role. I honor them for the ways they did it well, for the ways they did it not well, for just attempting to be in this fierce space of mother. And bring your hands in front of your heart and we'll share one ohm to finish. Deep breath in. Oh. To the divine mother energy within you, deep within your heart, within all beings and all things, you can bow. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so very much. It has been such an honor to set the intention for the day and to connect with all you women and to be able to connect with the great women who are going to be presenting now. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you don thank you thank you so much christy your classes are always so beautiful and i'm sure so many of you here in miami know christy she teaches at the standard and right now online i'm sure a whole lot do you have a regular online schedule christy that anybody from anywhere i have um can you hear me yes yes Okay, because I just switched from my, and I can't hear you that well, but I can barely hear you. Yes, I am um, teaching, I started doing these offerings six weeks ago. I have never before embraced anything online. I am very shy about anything with the camera. Um, but yeah, I started, I just felt an immediate call to serve. So I have free classes every week, three days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 10.30 on Instagram Live. It's about an hour and um, I've really been enjoying doing them. It's my own little way to serve and offer something. So I hope you can join me. It's Christy McKenzie on Instagram. I'll put that in the chat and then also in the follow-up so that if you want to follow Christy and take some of Thank her you. classes. I think I have that and one. I have a website that of course I'm constantly working on refining because I'm newer to the technological world, but also christymckenzie.com. I want to thank all of you guys for taking the time for yourselves um, because this is such a gift for yourself and to the people that you serve and the spaces that you hold. We all really, really need great mothers to show up right now. So thank you for taking this time for you. It's the best thing you can do for everyone else you serve. Thank you so much. Somebody wrote, um, Betty Smith, wish we were going to brunch now together. So it's I do too. I Look at my mother-in-law. I love seeing all your faces. This is so sweet. And I think what's really neat hey, is Betty. transitioning into a, an opportunity for us to connect. If you are hungry, take a moment and grab something to eat, you know, and bring it over to the computer. You know, it's, it's funny. It's, it's, it's not brunch in the, the traditional, you know, thought of, of gathering together and having brunch, you know, um, on, on, over a table together, but we're here and we can see each other. We can see our smiles and our faces. And if you're hungry for brunch, grab it. And because we get to talk for um, about the next hour. So the, no more movement for right now. I don't think, right, Jasmine? <laughs> so oh, good. All right. I'll get my teeth. 
Now, Christy, do you get to stay or do you have some, do you have another something or do you get to stay for a little bit? I'm going to stay for just a few minutes. I have to actually go teach my Saturday morning <laughs> class on Instagram now for those who aren't in this. So I'm going to get my tea and listen for a few minutes and then pop off. But thank you so much, you guys, Sandy and Lolita and Betty. I see you all and I'm so grateful. You guys are family to me. So it makes, warms my heart so much to see you here. Uh, I really appreciate you showing up. Great. Thank you, Christy. Thank you so much. So in Thank the follow-up email, I'll be sure everybody knows how to get in touch with Christy if it's the first time. Big that kiss, Kim. And uh, for those of you who have your cameras off, if you're not too shy, um, please feel free to turn your camera on because we love to see your face. I think that's part of this, this connection. I'm going to mute Christy for a minute. Hold on. That's her bird. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm really, really excited to welcome Jasmine um, as our second presenter. Jasmine, give us a wave, Jasmine. There's Jasmine. Do you see her there? I'm going to unmute her too. So Jasmine and I have known each other now for two years. We actually met um, just around Mother's Day two years ago, so because she was doing um, a talk um, on, on motherhood and really sharing a very special story um, within a group gathering as well. It was over dinner. Um, so from that moment, I knew that we had a, a really beautiful connection. She not only is, she's a, a mother to two young children as well, um, Liv and Zen. Um, she's a, a dedicated wife, but she's also in this space. She's a psychotherapist and she has two degrees, two master degrees from Columbia University. And she's created something that she calls life therapy. So it's not only in the traditional sense of psychotherapy, but it's also incorporated Operating, coaching, mindfulness, meditation. Um, and she's written a couple of books. I've read two of them. I have one of them here, Extraordinary You. Um, the Extraordinary Mommy book, which I especially love. I have gifted always to a few people, so I don't have a copy with me here. Um, but I'm really, really excited to, to welcome Jasmine. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Jasmine. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everybody. What a beautiful transition. Like, I literally just cried, Christy. I came in and like five minutes in and I'm like, wow, ah, this is so deep. So thank you for that. That was really beautiful. <clears throat> so, hi, ladies. Should I just jump in? Well, you know, we were really, you know, we're transitioning from yoga and, you know, some people are writing in, you know, I think it's okay for, if you want everybody to connect, get to know who you're talking to, to you, however you'd like to, to transition to Jasmine. Um, but I see some people are writing in the chat here as well. What are we writing? Let's see. I'm going to make you a co-host as well so that you can do things like me. <laughs> well, so maybe what we'll do is I'll jump in and start sharing a bit and then we'll spend time at the end after afterwards and spend some more time chatting and kind of like open question everyone can should we do it the same way as we did before where everyone kind of has a question and you can open it up to me or to the group and and have it become more of a a full conversation sure sure all right so i'm going to begin by dedicating this to my mother and i'm going to start off by sharing a little bit with you about my story and I, I often start when I speak by explaining that I'm, I'm not a speaker. Like I, I'm much more comfortable as a listener. But I'm, I'm here to share because I feel like I'm supposed to. So I'm just going to share my story and trust that you're going to get whatever it is that you're meant to get from it. So I was born, and I was born. I grew up in a house that was far from ordinary. My friends lovingly referred to it as Willy Wonka's factory. So the house was, had purple trim around the house and the mailbox was shaped like a heart. And every post on the walkway going up to my house was a different pastel color. And every cabinet in my kitchen was a different color. And we had hot pink leather couches and wall hangings of ice cream sundaes and illuminated signs of love. And this house that I grew up in was the manifestation of my mom's commitment to living from love. Now, 
it wasn't just like ice cream and bubblegum love. It was, it was that it was fun and it was loving and warm and inviting and alive, but it was also deep and connected and conscious and communicative. And it was all based on her commitment to her own inner work. So my mom, you know, at this point in life, people are, are more comfortable with the term of conscious parenting and meditation and things like that. But she was kind of a, a generation in advance, right? So she meditated for an hour a day, every single day of my life after we got out of the house, it became two hours. So she was highly dedicated to her own deep spiritual <clears throat> work. And I got to be the blessed recipient of that. Now, my father was in the picture too, but she was the pilot. He was the co-pilot in this equation. So we love dad, but we'll talk about mom. So as a result, I always felt a little bit guilty because I knew how rare this life was and how rare this parenting was and how rare this home was. You know, I had all of my friends who would come over and always tell me how amazing she was and how lucky I was. And, you know, I, I, throughout my life, I've traveled to over 65 countries. I've, I've seen the world. I've seen the way that it is. And I, I know how unique this upbringing was. And for some reason, I just always felt like I, I just got lucky and I didn't really deserve it. And I, and I felt a little bad or ashamed. I didn't want to brag. I didn't want people to feel bad. Like, oh, like, sorry, you know, I, I got this and you didn't. So I, I, I never shared much about it. But one day my, my love bubble burst. And it was five years ago um, on January 22nd, 20. 15, my mom was driving to meet me for lunch and she never arrived. And that was the day that my mom left this planet, left her body, and that was it. And that was the day that I, my whole life changed. And I realized, I realized that deep down, it was my gift. Like I, I'm never gonna forget the call. I'm never gonna get forget the call that I got when I found out. And I had tears pouring down my cheek and I could feel her speak through my soul. And, and what I heard her say was, it's okay. You're gonna be okay. You're the mommy now. And so at the time, I was the mother of a one-year-old. I had my private practice. I was married. I had my father, who always depended on my mother. So now he was a mess. And then I went into the most painful year of my life, crying every single day, and but intentionally crying, intentionally going through it. You know, I feel that I was as prepared for this pain as I could have been with all the tools that I have in my tool belt as a therapist, with all the tools that she had given me through my life. I felt like, okay, now's my time to actually use them in a way that I never had had to before. And so one year later, after this most painful year of my life, on the actual anniversary of her death, January 22nd, 2016, I gave birth to my daughter at home in the bathtub. My mother gave me the biggest gift of my life, letting me know that everything happens exactly as it's supposed to. And my brother actually got the biggest gift of his life on that day as well, which is in my book and you can read all about it. And so when I called my dad to tell him that our, my daughter was born, he was at the same mile marker where it was that she left us, mile marker 64. So there were a 
a handful multitude of all these synchronicities, all of these divine connections, and they're all in the book, but those were a few of the big ones. And after my daughter was born, a new peace came over me. And I realized that that guilty feeling that I had always felt that I wasn't worthy of being loved like that, of having had that experience. Not only was I worthy, but all children are. And that perhaps she was gone so that I would find the courage to share. So I don't know if you've ever had this experience where you've felt guilty for your blessings, or if you've ever had a painful situation that you know is a gift in some way and you're waiting to figure out what that gift may be. But those were some of the, the nuggets that I got from it. And so upon writing the book, it was really to put together all of the nuggets, the core elements of what made her able to love the way that she did, what made her able to be present the way that she was. Because really, when you think about it, I often think about a relationship as two people on two different sides of a bridge. And the way that one feels loved by someone else is that this person, the other person is coming to your side of the bridge with you, is seeing you, is hearing you, is experiencing your experience with you, and is there with you. And she was so good at that, so good at coming to my side of the bridge with me and my brother and helping us feel seen and heard and understood and loved. And now that I'm a parent, it always seemed easy to me because she made it look so easy. And now that I'm a parent, I realize how hard it is to actually do that because I have so much going on on my side of the bridge in my head and all the things that I want to do. And my kids are in their own little world and all they want is for me to be in their bubble. But it's really hard to do that. And so writing this book was all of kind of her, her key foundations of how she was able to do that inner work so that she could be there on, that, on our side of the bridge with us. Now, one of the biggest factors in this is in the second book that Don was talking about is understanding our inner space and our feelings. And so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go and take a deep dive into how we deal with our feelings because I really think of our inner space like a, a room sometimes it's a messy room, right? And so in our inner space, we have all these thoughts, we have all these feelings. And what we need to learn how to do is clean out this room so that we can be free flowing, so we can have this love flow through us because there's nothing more powerful than a mother's love. But when it's cloudy and when it's, when it's messy in there, it's hard for that love to flow through us. It's hard for us to move and be on our children's or our spouses or our loved ones side of the bridge. And so I oftentimes people talk about mindfulness and I think of this as the step before a mindfulness practice. I see mindfulness and we'll get into the details of it. Mindfulness is kind of a maintenance practice, which is like, I'm gonna talk about kind of a deep clearing of what goes on inside of us. And then a mindfulness practice is the maintaining of having everything in its place, right? But sometimes we just like need to do a spring cleaning and put everything in its place and work through all of our inner stuff because we never have before, or we don't know how to, or we just think it's normal or it is normal, but we, we just haven't. So what I'm gonna do is talk to you a bit about our feelings, right? So I like to think of our inner space as like the planet, right? On our planet, it's not always a sunny day. Sometimes it's stormy, sometimes it's raining, sometimes there's a tsunami, right? We need the quote, bad weather for the perfection of our planet. It won't function if it's always a sunny day. However, we have judgments against bad weather, right? We think, oh, good weather versus bad weather. So the idea is how do we understand that all this weather is perfect and it's whole and it's required, it's necessary for the functioning of our planet. And equally, it's not always a sunny day inside of us. And our, quote, bad weather, our stress, our anxiety, our fears, our anger, our, all of the, quote, negative feelings inside of us are also part of our wholeness and are part of our perfection. Now, the challenge is 
with that, and I know that we have yogis and all these people, the challenging part about that is that it's just uncomfortable and we don't want to feel it. And so I like to think of it like this glass, right? So we've got here our, our quote positive feelings. And I say quote on purpose because it's all perfect and it's all whole. So I, we have our positive quote unquote feelings, right? Which is like your ambition and your motivation and your excitement and your whatever, all your like you're at least there's, I have so much to be grateful for. And there's kids starving in Africa. I shouldn't be sad, you know, like that kind of thing. Then we have our glass half empty part, which are our sadness and our fears and our pains. Now, personally, because I grew up in this love bubble that somehow I didn't get the memo that pain was okay. And it wasn't for anyone's fault, but it was because I was so aware of my blessings that I was, I always felt like I should be positive. And I think that we have this, this kind of like positive attachment in our society, right? Got to be positive, got to be positive, got to be positive. There's so much, at least, you know, we're in this quarantine. Well, you know, it could be worse. It could be worse. We should, we should count our blessings and all of these things. But what happens here is that we're focusing on only seeing the positive, the glass half full part, and we build this muscle to go into this part, which ends up avoiding the, the pain and the discomfort, which is also part of our perfection. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to deal with these feelings, because I think that we have four fundamental ways in which we can deal with our uncomfortable feelings, right? And right now is the perfect time for us to be dealing with these uncomfortable feelings because there's so many of them coming up because we're stuck with ourselves, right? And I remember once I did this 10-day silent meditation retreat and it was 10 days straight of just being with myself. One hour, meditate, break. One hour, meditate, break. One hour, meditate, break. And the fascination was that there was no stimulus. There was no, nothing happening in my life. And then I'd be happy. And then I'd be sad. And then I'd be angry. Like all these feelings just start come through you because you're, you're, you're stopping long enough to let it move through you. So I really think of this quarantine as this beautiful opportunity to let this stuff come through us, but I also want to give you some tools for actually how to do that. So, so if you think about these uncomfortable feelings, like I said, there's four ways in which we deal with them. So first of all, just before we, I jump into those, I want to ask a few questions. Like if you think about some reoccurring uncomfortable feelings that you have, can you, can you identify like some reoccurring things that come up to you? Is it a fear? Is it a self judgment? Is it an anger? Is it a frustration? Can you think of some uncomfortable feelings that come up for you? And then the next question to ask yourself is how do I feel about those uncomfortable feelings? Do I like them? Do I wish they would go away? Do I, how do I, how do I feel about it? How do I relate to those uncomfortable feelings? Because I think these four different ways that we actually deal with our uncomfortable feelings can say so much, right? So the first, the first way that people deal with these uncomfortable feelings is through self-medication, right? So this is, I don't want to feel this uncomfortable feeling. So therefore I'm going to do anything to make me feel good. And oftentimes the things that make us feel good aren't really good for us. So that's the eating, like and this over, overeating, drinking, um, porn, shopping. Um, oh yeah, I'm trying to think, that was a different one. Um, you know, just whatever, push gambling, uh, whatever things that you're doing that give you a high, but that really, are making you feel worse in the long run, right? It gives you a high temporarily, but it makes you feel worse. And often I like to think of the extent of your self-medicating has to do with the extent of your pain. The more pain you're in, the more intense your self-medication, okay? Then the next thing, it's kind of like, I, that was the most intense way that we deal with our pain, right? Then the next level is distraction, which I think most people hang out in most of the time. That's watching your screens, being on your screens, organizing, um, cleaning, uh, maybe calling a friend, seeing how they're doing, sometimes even exercising, ways in which we are trying not to feel what we're feeling. It could be seen as positive, right? That was like something that I used to always do. My, my vices were eating, 
So that was my self-medication. I would eat and then I would over-exercise. And then once I started working through it, what I realized I would always go and, and take care of other people, right? Like I'd go to their side of the bridge and I wouldn't come to my side of the bridge and deal with what was going on on my side of the bridge because I was busy taking care of other people. So as much as that seemed like a nice thing to do, it was still distracting from myself. So, and then the last one is engulfment. So the first two are like, if you have your pain and you're just trying to see what you can do to get into your positive feelings, you're either self-medicating or you're distracting so that you can be here. Now there's some people who do the opposite, who just are taken over by the pain and they're just stuck in it and they can't get themselves out of it, right? So those are people who are feeling depressed and who are feeling low and it's not worth it and, and they're just stuck in it. Now, I think as a society, we're often taught, we're, we're we respond to people as if they're stuck in their pain and we're teaching them the skill to get out of it. So the skill to get out of the pain is those things, right? It is seeing the bigger picture, it is saying at least, that. let me be generous, maybe let me be grateful, let me give, right? So those are still our lovely things to do. But a lot of people already have that muscle built and already have that skill built. And so if you aren't somebody who's engulfed in your pain, you need to do the opposite direction in order to get through it. So the ultimate goal is to become the glass, right? The ultimate goal is how do be I become the space that allows this duality to exist simultaneously? So I call this practice self-love, right? Everyone talks about self-love, but what it really is is how do I become a loving parent to my pain? How do I love my uncomfortable feelings? And it doesn't mean like, it doesn't mean enjoy, it means honor and accept like an open hand, right? When I love something, it doesn't mean I want more of it. It doesn't mean I hold on tight. It means I have an open hand and I let it flow through me and I accept it for exactly as it is. And I learn how to love it and relate to it and be kind to it because it's there and because it's part of me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a little bit clearer. So if you think about yourself what is your tendency? Are you somebody who self-medicates? Are you somebody who distracts? Are you somebody who engulfs and, and falls into your pain? Maybe sometimes one or the other. Which is your tendency? And so now that you are aware of your tendency, what we're gonna do is just be clarify is that if you are somebody who self-medicates or distracts and you're you are always trying to find the positive in things and you're you know or you're or you're self-medicating and eating and getting in these cycles the work here for you is to actually go into your pain and learn how to become a loving parent to your pain and if you are somebody who is stuck in your pain, then the work for you is to learn how to take your blinders off, to not be so stuck in it, and to start to see the bigger picture, to find ways to pull yourself out of it and to experience life more fully. And so I have a four-step meditation for you guys, if you'd like, that helps kind of intensify this experience, if you'd be down with that. We're down. Yeah, okay. We're up with it. All right, so why don't we, everyone close your eyes. Take a deep breath. So just take a moment and just check in with yourself. See what's going on inside you right here and now. And I'm gonna lead you through a series of questions. The first question is, what am I thinking right now? And then answer yourself. Right now, I am thinking this. Next question is, what am I feeling right now? And answer the question, I am feeling this. Third 
third question is, what are my body sensations? What am I experiencing in my body right now? I am experiencing this. And the last step is to identify that thought, feeling, body sensation, whatever seems like it needs, whatever needs the most attention right now. You bring all of your attention to that thought or that feeling or that sensation and talk to it the way a loving mother would talk to a child. Tell it it's okay. It's okay that you're here, thought. It's okay that you're here, feeling. It's okay that you're here, sensation. It's okay. I love you. I see you. I accept you. You're okay. It's okay. And as you continue to speak to that part of yourself, allowing that love to flow through you, loving acceptance. Just let yourself breathe. No judgment. Now just take a few moments. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Bring your attention back to the room. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. So, so throughout this quarantine, I've been feeling drawn to support or serve and help others go through their, their own inner journey as all of these things come, in, come up. And so what I've done is I've created a, a 14 day reflection challenge. It's an email that you get each day which has a prompt of something to reflect upon and then journal entries for you to work through and kind of do a deep dive so that you're pausing each day for, it could be five minutes, it could be 20 minutes, whatever it is that you want. I can give that to Dawn and I invite you all to join the challenge. And at the end of the challenge, all the mothers, it's four mothers, are invited to join a community. You can join it now if you don't want to do the challenge or you could do both or none or whatever, but the community, is intended, what I've realized in my own work is that I work best individually with people and the most powerful work that I do is helping one individual person go through their own experience, right? So there's only so much you can do with a group of people. However, and there's only one of me and I can only serve so many people. So in this community, I have courses, both for both of those books, I have online course, courses that are available for how to deal with your uncomfortable feelings, your anxiety, stress, and other challenging emotions. And another course is how to be the parent your children need right now, which is an extension of this book about my mother. But there's also an opportunity to, it's kind of like a private podcast where all the sessions that I'm having with individual clients, we're recording them and then sharing them with each other so that you have access to not only have sessions with me and I'm going to be having some other coaches 
join as well. So you're getting your individual sessions, but you can be listening to each other's sessions because what I've realized for me, part of what keeps me most grounded is this work, is that when I'm working with clients individually, I, I feel grounded. I feel reflective. We're learning, we're growing, we're challenging. And I always wish that people could be a fly on the wall of these conversations because everyone would feel so much less alone if they knew all the things that everyone else was going through. I feel like oftentimes we compare our insides to other people's outsides, right? We see what everyone posts and people say or whatever, but we don't really know what's going on inside them. And then we think that something's wrong with us, whereas we're all going through such similar things, particularly right now. And so to pull this all together, one thing that I really realized about my own journey now that I've lost my mom is part, I'm sure many of you feel this way, is that I know for me that I, I wanna go beyond where my mom was, right? I wanna take her life to the next level. I wanna be even better than she was. And I think that she was able to be such an extraordinary mother, but it was also in a different time, right? She wasn't trying to build a business. She didn't have the pace. She didn't have the internet. She didn't have the social media. It was a, it was a different time. And I think that it's much, much harder now in this day and age to be that kind of mother when you're trying to manage and handle all the other things. And people say balance is bullshit. And I really, as a Libra, I'm somebody who's highly committed to balance. So I think it does come as a priority. Like if you want balance, you can make it happen, but it is a priority. And so for me, it's been an interesting dance to take her life to the next level, to not only be a, a conscious, present, loving mother, but to always also be a businesswoman and to have a business and to and have my my relationship with my husband and have my own well-being and have my friendships to have all those things to be able to manage simultaneously is a far greater challenge than the one that she experienced and what i've also realized is that i don't have a role model for this life that i'm creating my vision for my life is different than the, the lives that I witness around me and the people who I'm inspired by. I mean, I think of, you know, like Oprah or Tony Robbins or Gandhi or, you know, Marie Forleo or Mother Teresa, all these people, none of them are, are married mothers. None of these people making a difference on the planet are also being mothers and being present and being loving and doing this deep, powerful work within their home and being a wife. And so my mission for my own life is how, to, how do I do both and how do I create a life that looks like mine, that's not somebody else's and I'm not following somebody else's plan for how a life should be and doing all of these, you know, everyone, all these days, everyone's got a course and you should do it this way and you should do it that way. But for me, I don't want somebody else's information as to how to do it. I want to find my own information because I'm optimizing for something different than everybody else is. And you are, and you are, and you are. So part of this work that I do with people is to help you find your own way and your own path so that you can optimize for whatever makes the most sense for you. And so I invite you to do this work, to find your own answers, to do the reflection, to do, to join the community, whatever feels of value to you, you are more than welcome and you're more than invited. And with that said, I would love to speak with you guys and see what your thoughts are. If you have any questions, I'm here to share. Well, I think it would be really, thank you, Jasmine. Thank you so much. Um, I think, you know, we have a nice uh, size group. We have a small enough group though, too. I think it would be nice to hear from everyone. Um, and certainly, I think somebody had posted earlier, they'd love to simply know where you're all from. I mean, that's just a very simple, simple thing to say who you are and where you're from. But um, more importantly, I mean, Jasmine has a huge, huge wealth of knowledge and wisdom and, and experience. And I've had lots of these conversations together with her. Um, so I think if simply there's a question, either <clears throat> if you're a mother 
yourself or I have a five-year-old similar she has young children as well if you have young children if there's <clears throat> something that you're navigating through um, and you would like to to ask that or if you are a mother who has been through this I know we have a few of, of you here too if you have a little tidbit of wisdom there's so much wisdom that we can learn from each other if we're not too shy or nervous to to share it um, so with that said I think I will go first <laughs> and then pass it along. Um, <clears throat> so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dawn and I live in Stewart, Florida. Um, I can see my mother-in-law is here on this call, Gail Grossman. I can see my mom's name on this call, but she's hiding somewhere, Lori Esposito. Um, and so I have a five-year-old. Oh, there she is. Hi, mom. <laughs> Um, I love when we could see each other. So I have a five-year-old and the question I have for you, Jasmine, and I think that there's no real easy answer to this, but I know um, Zen is probably six and Liv is four, right? Or something like yeah. that. How do you, it's kind of a two-part question. One is when you're seeing bad behavior, behavior that you think looks bad, you know it's for attention. I mean, I know it's for attention, okay. or it seems that way. One is managing that behavior, but at the same time, I can see even when, you know, you want to try to connect with, he's a boy, him, you know, ask him how he's feeling. He does not really want to share any mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. emotion or conversation unless it's like the stuff that you don't want to see. Like what? I mean, okay. you know, he'll just, he'll try to like, he, he, he'll try to hit or he'll try to mm -hmm. act out or he'll try to still, you know, make silly noises that don't make sense just because right. he's trying to get that, you know, something right. across that's a feeling, emotion or whatever, but it's not coming through in any constructive way. Yeah. So the question is how to deal with it. <laughs> and there's no real like magic ball. Okay, okay no. so, so there's, a, there's a few thoughts that I have. So one thing that I find the most challenging is that when I'm trying to, I come back to this bridge idea, right? Is that if they're on their side of the bridge and we're on our side of the bridge. And his side of the bridge is whatever he wants, whatever he needs. The biggest challenge is when we both plant our feet on our own sides of the bridge. And we want them to come to our side of the bridge and, and understand we need this and we try to control the situation. We want them to be on our side of the bridge and that's where there's conflict. And sometimes it's necessary for them to come to our side of the bridge, but how do we get them to go there, right? So the question is something that I really, I use with my kids when they're acting crazy is I actually look them, to, I get down at their level on my knees and I, I say, do you want my attention? And often they question, then often they calm down and say, yes. Okay, is this the way that we act to get our attention? No, I want to give you my attention and I will. And this is how we ask for it. Do you wanna try that again? And so the idea is how do we not react to their reactions and plant our feet on our side of the bridge, but how do we come over to their side of the bridge to feel their experience, to acknowledge it, and then invite them, okay, well, now let's see how this works. And so, so the, the real question is, if you want my attention, what are, what are some ways that you can get it? Okay. One day I remember talking to my son and he's six, right? So we had this experience where I, I was saying to him, how do I get you to listen to me? And he goes and looks at me and goes, mom, how do I get you to listen to me? And I was like, oh. Like, whatever it is that we want from them is what we need to be giving to them. And so I'm busy trying to get him to, like, do things my way or control the situation, and he's busy doing the same thing. And everyone's always like, oh, we have to be the bigger person or whatever. But, yeah, like, yes, period, end of story, always with your spouse, with whatever. Just always know that your job, that our inner work, all of our self love all of our clearing is so that we can go to the other person's side of the bridge first. That's why we do this work. That's why we're clearing our inner space so that we can be loving enough to go to their side of the bridge first, help them feel seen, help them feel heard, and then we can invite them to our side of the bridge if they'd like to. 
of that. And I guess that's something with all humans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely. <laughs> and spouses. <laughs> Especially. <laughs> because it's so easy. I noticed, like, and I was talking to a client about this the other day. Is like, when I'm in session with a client, and it's me and you, I have no problem being on your side of the bridge and being in your world and having your experience. I can do it for, like, 10 hours straight. I'll just be on your side of the bridge or whoever else's side of the bridge all day long. But for some reason, when you get home, when you're with your kids, when you're with your loved ones or your parents or your, the people who are, who are closest to you, they're the people who are our triggers. They're our spiritual teachers. They're the ones who bring out our stuff. And there's also, uh, it's like you're, you're in your most natural state, which makes you kind of want to stay on your side of the bridge more. It takes work and effort to go to somebody else's side of the bridge. And so it's really understanding that when you're in that space and you're with those people, that's where the real learning comes in is like, why is it so hard to go to this kid's side of the bridge and just see what he's feeling or see what my husband's feeling? <laughs> so that that's, you're being distracted, but it's okay. So, so that's, <laughs> that's, somebody just walked in. Huh? Somebody just walked in. Uh, speaking they, of which. <laughs> <laughs> <Beat him up. laughs> so that, that's the, that's the synopsis there. Thank you, Jasmine. Would anybody else like to chime in and tell us who you are, where you're from, and um, either just simply that or share a tidbit of wisdom or question? Um, I, hi, I'm Christine, everybody. Um, I'm here in St. Bart right now. It's beautiful, also in the Caribbean. So I guess, yeah, I'm technically a Caribbean mom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because we don't actually have a hospital to deliver babies here so people deliver at their home or like with a doula so but I actually delivered in Miami I happen to be traveling that way when I had my baby but um thank you so much for that question like I can relate because my three-year-old he'll do the exact same thing and <laughs> I have gone on my knees before so this reminds me I'm like ah oh, that makes sense like I, I I've done similar things in that definitely helps just to kind of get at his level and just kind of be playful and then and then he's like oh, yeah mom I want your attention like okay um my question um my husband and I struggle with this healthy eating <laughs> and you're gonna laugh because I'm a chef as well um <laughs> we try we try so hard to you know get him to just eat healthy veggies and um that's just not his thing. <laughs> he likes, well, the healthiest to, uh, is like chia pudding and, and smoothies, but you know, we don't want to force him, but I don't know if there's like a, yes. Oh my God. I hear yeah. You. I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've tried to make it look colorful and he's like, no, I don't want colors. I'm like, really <laughs> cool shapes, animals. Like, I don't know. But Christine, so I, I, I've been through this. I go through this. I have two kids. And so one of them will eat. I, I make the distinction in my home that there's real food and fake food. <laughs> so this real food is food from the earth and fake food is from a factory. And now you're allowed to eat both, but one of them hurts your body and one of them is good for your body. And so something that's been really important, like my daughter only wants food from the earth. Like I will offer her candy and a fruit and she'll choose a fruit every time. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been amazing to witness how just some people naturally, and my son wants it in a package and wrapper or whatever. And we have like a very plant-based organic household. We don't have much anything that's crap in our house, but he wants it. And I also don't want him to develop like this restrictive tendency of he's not allowed to have it. And then he's the kid who goes to everyone's house and like goes nuts, you know? So what I've tried to do is make clear that we're allowed to eat the, the fake food. However, if it's when we eat our real food and he's a lot more um, methodical, like he likes numbers and like rules and boundaries. So I make it a numbers game where we, our rule in our house is that, and I don't do it for her. I made it clear that she eats vegetables all day long. We, she had green smoothies for breakfast, like whatever she'll, she has frozen peas, like that's her thing. I don't know why. Um, he wants nothing to do with it. So with him, I, I've made a, the rule in the house is that 
he's offered and he's offered three veg three servings of vegetables a day and we define that a serving of vegetables is five to eight vegetables or five to eight bites for each serving and he's not forced to do it he's offered it and then but he also does have the the chance to have something that he likes as a result of it so if he eats his three servings of the day he gets a treat of the day okay. and so it's learning that we don't, we're allowed to eat treats, but we're, we have to nourish our body first. And if you don't want the vegetables, it's fine. We're not going to create a battle about it, but you also don't give them treats. Right. That's helpful. Yeah. You know, he's similar. He's a numbers guy. That, the I numbers know. help. Like literally I'll say like, eat your vegetables. And he's like, no, I'm like, eat seven, eat eight green beans. And he'll, then he'll like eat, count them. And then he's, he's good. It's weird, but that works with him. But Christine, you said something really um, good too about the smoothies. Like he'll do smoothies because you can, I used to say you could put anything in a smoothie. Like obviously yeah. there's something beyond smoothies, but at least you can feel like he's getting the, like some nutrients and some good, you know, stuff that you put in there. So I think that. Right. And hiding them in like the sauce <laughs> or the, the veggie yeah. burgers or whatever. Yeah. yeah. We hide all that stuff. As long as it's pink, he's good with it. But you can do a lot with beet juice and still keep it pink. <laughs> if my sister was here on this, she would say that she still has to do that for my dad. So, <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. That's helpful, though, with the numbers. Yeah. He's got that same mindset. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely. And, and, and sometimes we'll, like, make, a, a, like, a chart. Like, did you eat your three servings? Like, Okay, and if he's one serving, it has to be like the three servings to get the treat, or you come up with whatever it is for you. Yeah. But it is important. Originally, we had attached it to like screen time, and I, after further research, I realized that it has to be food related. So you don't make like the prize something that's non food related for food. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Of course. So, how about we have, do we have a few grandmother texts? on here too or anybody else would like it i like to chime in and tell us who you are where you're from and a question or not a question lolita no betty i see betty coming over i unmute you mute you all right hi everyone i'm betty uh, i live outside of indianapolis it was a brisk 34 degrees this morning wow I'm super charmed by the questions about having five and six year olds. My, my son is 14, uh, so I miss those challenges because they just seem <laughs> so easy. <laughs> like, so easy. I, I mean, like, really, quite honestly, I wish we were trying to get him to eat more vegetables. <laughs> Oh yeah, but, um, and, you know, Don, like, to the super annoying behavior like that's just to get a reaction from you the thing i found was just to ignore it yeah because i mean to the to the thing that's like i'm gonna drop this on the floor just to get your attention whatever yeah sometimes just ignoring it it'll go away yeah right and you can engage as jasmine was sharing on a different level so yeah, yeah that's helpful too because sometimes i see he, he'll do it to like all, get my husband and i like almost like to use us like oh yeah using us like oh. <laughs> using how skillful he's manipulative your child can be yeah. <laughs> stubborn. he's like manipulative and stubborn like strong yeah so i'm like you know, so worried when he's 14 if i don't get it now <laughs> yeah 14 Chris, christina i'm super blessed because my child eats everything and like tonight he's gonna make us korean barbecue i mean um but there were foods he didn't want to eat for sure. And we just did family style dinner all the time. And you just took what you wanted. We just made sure that everything on the table was healthy. Mm. So, you know, the choice, only options, yeah. choice is so important, right? And agency at every age. Yeah. Um, so I have tons of questions, but ladies, I do have to go. So I'm going to say goodbye, but I'll join you all later um, this Thank afternoon. You. Thank you, Betty, for uh, chiming in. Thank you, Sarah. So okay. Anyone else? Where are you from, Juliana? I'm uh, actually from Colombia. Mm. Uh, I've been here in the States for 20 years already, and I live in Boca Raton. 
I was invited to this wonderful experience by my dear friend Lolita. Mm. And uh, I love it to be here listening to all your experiences. I'm married, happily married, but never had kids, not by choice. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it's, it's fun and it's very interesting to hear everything that you're sharing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Juliana. Lolita, where are you from? Hi, I, I live in Miami Beach. I'm originally from Texas. I'm part Mexican and part Irish. Mm. My dad was Irish American. And um, I signed on um, through Christy's invitation. And I have found all of the knowledge that Jasmine has shared uh, terrific, even though I am single and don't have kids, but I took a lot of notes because I think it, it's relevant for, for all of us, some of the, the way we deal with our feelings and whatnot. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. completely. And that a lot of that was from this book that she has here, which is not geared necessarily towards mothers, right, Jasmine? It's really just Correct. towards people. Yeah, um, it's like it, a be your own therapist book. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Lolita. Um, do we have Ashley there? You were able. You finally were able to hear us, Ashley. Can you hear us now? I can. Okay, great. Where are you from, Ashley? Um, I'm from Miami, okay. and now I live in Jacksonville. Great. And I'm single and don't have kids, but I might want to someday. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to hear how everyone, how everyone lives their lives with their children and raises them. They do love kids. And I spend a lot of time with my sister's children as well. It's nice. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ashley. And we're thrilled to have you here. I think today's your first day on the virtual retreat. So this, this, that, this afternoon will be really great, too. Um, All right. Anyone else? Would anybody else like to chime in? Otherwise, because I know we're coming up on time as well, and I do, I would love to just give you a tiny glimpse as to what we're going to be doing later this afternoon, too. Um, Jody, are you there as well? So Jody is chimed in and out. Um, Jody is actually one of our presenters for later this afternoon. Um, so this afternoon, we uh, will have um, three amazing women from uh, St. Lucia and, and um, Antigua on with us. Um, we'll also do a little virtual tour through St. Lucia and Antigua, which I'm going to give you a glimpse in a couple of minutes on just kind of part one of that, which will only take a few minutes. Um, and then in part two, we'll, die, we'll, we'll have a, a, a visual video tour, plus then we'll have a conversation with these three women. And um, again, we'll talk about some topics around mothering, but I think even more uh, importantly, you know, there's just so much that we can learn from each other. And with, within the Caribbean, there's a whole different culture. There truly is. And, and it's like how we were all even raised potentially is different there as well. It's definitely much more focused, like Christy started us off this morning on the, the uh, feminine, on the, the matriarch type um, culture and society. So that would be just a really interesting, I think, again, engaging conversation. And then we will um, go transition right into Jody, which is why I was trying to point Jody out there, but I think she's coming in and out. She has um, a one and a half year old, um, but she's a, a beautiful, amazing teacher. If you don't already know Jody, um, so and she has a, a, the beautiful voice too. So I think it'll be a little bit sound healing. It'll be a little bit of both. Um, so with that, I would love to first show you a short. I think it's like two minute video here. Um, oops, hold on, let me press pause on that. So this is actually just a very fun kind of video that I filmed myself, not professional, you'll see me in it, but it's in St. Lucia. It, it um, is at one of the properties that we'll, we'll be featuring later. So I thought that would be kind of fun to show you and it's just a couple of minutes long. So I'm going to start there. So just give me a moment so I can share my screen with you all. Um, let's see. Okay, share. 
Can you see that? Yes? Yes? Oh. Yes. <laughs> This is why I'm here because of this Kanunas book. So this is one of our Kanunas um, hand selected properties for Kanunas Hands. This is my room. So I'm ready to head down to the spa. So I just finished a uh, massage. It's not in that. video from St. Lucia there. Um, has anybody been to St. Lucia? No? You, Christine, of course, of course. Okay, mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll dive into proper footage from St. Lucia. That's just my little kind of fun video, but St. Lucia is very adventurous. You know, they have the volcanoes and they have lots of, um, lots of lush land. You know, they certainly have beaches, but it's not as much about the spectacular beaches as it is about the adventure and all that. Um, but we will also take a visit into Antigua and Antigua um, is really all about the beaches. They have 365 beaches, one for every day of the year, which is really kind of cool. Um, so I have a one minute little intro into Antigua from a friend of mine who you might may or may not know, um, Kino McGregor, um, and I uh, organized a trip for her to Antigua and she has this one minute, a little bit more professionally organized video that shows you the place that we're going to dive into later this afternoon in Antigua. So I'm going to show you that and then... We'll probably start to wrap up. So just give me one moment. Let's see. Here we are. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm here at the beautiful Curtain Bluff, and I think that I may have just found paradise. <laughs> always wanted to come to this little island in the Caribbean Sea and here I am wow so amazing I feel so blessed to arrive just in time to catch this amazing glorious sunset look at this it's a hammock between two palm trees I mean couldn't you get any more picturesque than this it is a dream come true a Caribbean dream come true however good this looks in the video it is even better in person the sounds of the rolling waves, the beautiful tropical air. There's just not a care in the world. I even have a view of some coconuts that I hope to drink later. <laughs> okay. So, just a kind of tiny glimpse into two of these 
islands and these properties. But I think for me, anytime we're traveling, anytime um, we're experiencing something new, it's really about the people that we're connecting with. So that's what we're going to bring in um, with, we have Pearl from Marigold Bay. We have Wendy from, um, from Curtin Bluff. And, and we also have Toya from Curtin Bluff. Um, so that will be really pretty special. Um, so it's just about 1130. Gigi, I know you had walked away before, but did you want to um, introduce yourself or, or say anything before we wrap up? Sure, because um, I got some flowers that are sitting outside in 80 degree weather from my uh, one part of my family from Colorado and I had to bring them in the house and put them in water. So I apologize for walking away, but um, I've, uh, Jasmine, I just loved um, sharing earlier or listening to people share earlier about motherhood and, and the stresses of going through it. Well, for you younger ones, wait till you go through it a second time when you become a grandmother. Now I'm dealing with a five-year-old grandchild that wants to be heard, <laughs> wants to be uh, seen and, and uh, wants to... Uh, um, have have attention and it's it's a whole different feeling when you're a grandparent um, I'm sure if Laurie's still on she understands as well about um, we've gone through it once and we think that oh well we did our part but then it comes around again because uh, Robbie is five but he is number eight of eight grandchildren I have and in all their different ways they all want to be heard and their ages range from 19 down to five so being a grandmother is a whole different perspective than being a mother and you but you never stop being a mother mm -hmm. i mean even though my kids are probably you know older than most of you or know they're older than most of you that are on this on this uh link um you never stop being a mother and I, I understand um, when there is a loss of a mother, like Jasmine had, and you, you want some input, you, you, you instinctively want to talk to your mom, um, but she's not there anymore. So, you know, you kind of like have to rely on what she instilled on you when you were younger. Um, I had a loss, I, I had the similar loss. I had a one-year-old child when my mom died but I was only 22 years old. So at 22, losing a mother has forced me to, to kind of be all self-consumed. Um, so when you have to do everything yourself and don't have that mother to help guide you through um, some of the early parts of your life, like having children, giving childbirth, getting married, marriage not working out, getting a divorce, you know, having to fend for yourself. Um, I don't, I, I, I really, I really am not envious of all of you who have a mother. Um, I just look at it a different way than a lot of people do. Some people have a different perspective on what a mother is. Um, so I've overcompensated. So they, my kids call me big mother. <laughs> Because I've overcompensated my mother role. <laughs> but, um, I really enjoyed listening to what you had to say, and um, I wish you all love. Enjoy those little guys, and I appreciate what the other mom said that uh, you know, having having them all grow up. Now I'm going through with grandchildren, so look forward to it. You will have grandchildren someday, and you will be sitting down and saying you must eat your vegetables. <laughs> That's all I have to say, but I appreciate. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was beautiful, yeah. Thank you. That's my mother-in-law, so thank you so much. And I have my mom here, too. How cool is that? Does my mom want to say anything on who she is and say hello? Hello, I'm Lori, Dawn's mother. I'm very proud to be Dawn's mother. Dawn's been a great daughter. And um, yes, I agree with Gail about, uh, you went, I went through the challenges when your kids grow up and it was always a lot harder when they were teenagers. I said the, the 
three-year-olds to five-year-olds were easy. That, that was fine. But when they were teenagers, that's a different story. But um, I had Robbie here yesterday. That's Dawn's son. And um, he, he's, he's great. And he, he does talk a lot when he's here. And yesterday, he wanted to go in the pool. And he made 50 jumps into the pool. And I was rating his jumps into the pool. And he wiped the jumper. And I took photos of him. And we had a lot of fun. And with the vegetables and the food, and he comes to my house, he always wants cookies. So when he wants his cookies, I tell him he has to eat his lunch to get his cookies. So I do what Dr. Jasmine had suggested. And I did enjoy Dr. Jasmine's speech very much. And um, I relate to that in all different phases other than children. And I enjoyed this whole thing, the whole retreat. And thank you, Dawn. Thank you. Involved. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. That's a, actually that's a perfect segue to to close out. Unless there's anything anyone else would like to share or to chime in with. Uh, just one thing. I might have missed the names of the Jasmine's books. I'll put them in the link here, and I'll send it also in the follow up email. But here's one. It's called Extraordinary You. Can you see that? Yep, I can. And the other one is called Extraordinary Mommy. And I actually just gifted that to our cousins, um, Melissa Oliver, who's having a baby. It's Melissa, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a perfect gift for a new mother. But I'll send that. I can put that in the link as well. And I did put in this chat um, that 14-day challenge, which is so beautiful. I did it myself. And it's not really geared even just towards mothers. Like I thought, I even asked Jasmine halfway along, I said, you know, can this be kind of for anybody? Because it really can be. It's, a, it's just like a conscious challenge, I think. But there's maybe one day, I think that's a little bit more geared towards your children. Um, but with that said, I am so, so, so grateful to have Jasmine. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for you all. sharing your story, sharing your light. You have a beautiful story. You have a beautiful family. Um, and really just grateful for you to be here to share with us. It's a gift. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having me. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day, everybody, even the non-mothers. Happy Mother's Day to your mothers. Lots of love to everybody. Lots Thank of love. You. Thanks so much. Okay, and we'll see you at 3 o'clock. Bye. 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 Thank you.